Assistant Colonial Activist James Otis was struck in the head by a British officer. Violently, James Otis spent the last few years speaking out against the new taxes Origin has imposed on us. His strong words inspire us all, but alas, if Otis gets beaten, then we all get beaten. The Red Goats have shown us more brutality than the Indians now massacring than the Indians now, sorry, massacring five civilians in King Street in March. The troops sent to protect us are now trying to harm us, treat us brut brutally. May we all hope that Otis recovers. We cannot live under this madness. The king and his troops are mistreating us all. We must break free. Bennett, this is breaking news. A royal official has come from the king delivering the most horrid act yet. Ian Tarberlax. British warships have been deployed surrounding Boston's harbor. Ships are being turned back under threat of sinking. Our reporter, John Adams, is out. And... Here's what he has to say. Uh, yes, behind me you see the British troops entering houses under the courting acts. Already I see the colonists running out to buy supplies for the redcoats. Money is flying out of the purses as the parliament demands that the people of Boston pay for their tea dumped into the harbor. More of the acts will come soon. Thank you, John. Now our people have to take the extra burn of money lingering. Since the last decade, that Parliament has imposed taxes on us without our approval, bring us hardship and despair. In other news, today is the, anniversary, is the anniversary of the day the Stamp Act was passed. The Stamp Act taxed all of our legal documents, from marriage papers to even our dice and playing cards. Every day, items requiring a stamp on it. From New Hampshire to Georgia, colonists angrily protested, burning the stamps and attacking tax collectors and stamp sellers. In a few months, there will be a celebration for the repeal of the Township Acts. Every day, items costing us money to pay for the British debt. What colonists are calling an outrage will become an unquenchable anger. Thanks for tuning in, and we will keep you posted on more tyrannical acts. Hello, and welcome to Channel 572. This is all about history, and today we are interviewing George Washington, asking him about the advantages and disadvantages the colonists had in the Revolutionary War. It is a honor to meet you, George. What can you say in general? How did you do in the war? Well, we started out poorly, but with help of the French and Indians, we showed those British lobster bags who's the boss. Can you tell more about your advantages against your so-called lobster bags? I don't want to say false facts, but I was definitely a good advantage for the Patriots. I became an excellent leader, gaining lots of experience in every battle. We were fighting in what we thought is right, and that made us strong and unite. Many patriots had rifles and could protect themselves. Also, a group called Sharpshooters were a great help to our armies. They had great weapons called American Lawn Rifles. These rifles were extremely accurate and light in weight. They also had a great tactic to kill all commanders and scouts first. Without navigation or guidance, an army was easy to defeat. Of course, our forces weren't the best. Most patriots were poorly trained and didn't have the right clothing to live in the woods. So lots of them just died of different diseases, not British. Not only that, but we had little firepower, almost no cannons and no navy. Still. We had a chance to win this war, and we did. We won it! Okay, okay. Thank you for sharing this with us. We will be back with another interview from the other side of the war. Welcome back to the Old Bell History Channel. This time, we will be interviewing an average British soldier on what were the British good sides and their weak spots. 
so what can you tell about the advantages your side had? Well, first of all, all of us were highly trained and had tons of experience. Also, we had the best navy in the world and we had 10 times as firepower as those pesky colonists. We were the strongest and the largest army in the world. We were victorious in every battle we had, except for this one. Okay, how about some weak spots or disadvantages? The British army has no disadvantages. Now, now, don't lie to us. Why did you lose the war then? Fine. We the British had only two disadvantages in this horrible war. One was that we weren't used to the land in the new world. We needed scouts to show the way. Also, another horrible problem was this large body of sea that stood between Britain and us. It was impossible to communicate. Thank you for sharing with us today. And this is it for today's newscast. Common Sense was a pamphlet and was written by Thomas Paine. Common Sense first appeared in 1776. Of course, curious readers just had to snatch up some copies. The pamphlet stayed the king was a jerk and couldn't keep ruling an entire continent from one little island. According to Payne, he said, In England, a king hath little more to do than make war and give away jobs. In six months, more than 500,000 copies were sold. It continued to change minds of men, urged on by Payne and other radicals. People wanted to start thinking the unthinkable. The colonists now do not believe that Parliament did not have the right to make more laws for the colonies. Breaking news! Today our legislature passed the Declaration of Independence! July 4th, 1776. It was written by John Adams. Most of this document told things done by England that influenced the Patriots to rebel against England. Like sending foreign troops that were hi hired by the king to destroy our property. But John Adams did not come up with this document. More people came in to help with the writing and all the ideas. Like Washington and Franklin. This document declared independence from England and that we are now a free country. Long live America! Can you tell me exactly what happened to Bunker Hill, Colonel William Prescott? Why, well, yes I can. As you know, Bunker Hill was all Little Hill. But if you could call it a battle, we had so little ammo against the British. Twice our people beat back these British people. But the third time they advanced, we were so underpowered. They were so, so much numbers. I mean, we cannot even recall what happened. I was the only survivor. My people were beaten down by all of their fists. We had lost. Now, George Washington, tell me exactly what happened at Germantown. Well, what happened there was strange. Very. I don't understand it. There were there were only nine thousand British there, and we had eleven thousand. I don't understand how we could have lost. But then again, there was that fog that everybody was shooting at each other. So, yeah, that was the undertaking of the British. Can you tell me exactly what happened at Trenton, Colonel Rock? Well, our little town of Trenton was. Fully fortified, nobody, I mean nobody, could get in. But for some reason, people who were, were attacking us from the back, we didn't think of that. All new news, all new news, just happened four months ago in New England. A so-called commander, Cornwallis, irresponsibly took General's orders and disobeyed to send part of his troops to New York for supplies. 
he was determined that British ships would supply his army from the sea. Not long after the army settled in the small town named Yorktown, a known patriot leader named George Washington with the help of French troops under the commandment of Commander Comte de Rochambeau surrounded the town on land. A French fleet under Admiral de Grasse blocked the exits from the sea. By the end of September 1781, there were twice as much patriots than the soldiers of Cornwallis' army. 16,000 patriots surrounded Yorktown in every direction. On October 19, 1781, after weeks of French artillery destroying the city and our forces, Cornwallis' army had to surrender because of lack of supplies and food. This was another defeat that could cause Britain to lose its first war. This is breaking news. Britain has ended the war with America. We are finally free to call ourselves Americans. This is the best day in history. Since Britain was so eager to the war, they gave us what we wanted. The Tree of Paris allowed us to become our own independent country. It recognized our 13 colonies as an independent nation. We also got fishing rights, which will now allow us to make more, our own money instead of giving those d dirty Britons taxes. Now, the 13 colonies, oh, I, I'm sorry, America is free and independent from the British taxes, taxes and the hardships. George Washington, who had never commanded a unit bigger than a regiment before the war, commanded a fighting force whose numbers barely topped 5,000 at times. His army had a shortage of everything. They had barely enough gunpowder to keep their muskets firing. They left footprints where they marched and low morale. How did these obvious underdogs win their independence? They faced the best equipped and trained army in the world. How could the British possibly lose to a bunch of ragtag rebels? For one, the British had to ship supplies and reinforcements 3,000 miles across the Atlantic to the rebellious colonies, which often took a long time. So British troops stayed bottled up in the cities and watched the rebels swarm the countryside. If those Brits ventured out into the cities, their supply line would be cut. In fact, they couldn't get supplies quickly. They depended on their navy. The Americans had the home field advantage. They could get soldiers and supplies without having that 3,000 mile distance barrier. Foreign powers also made Britain's hands full. The Spanish attacked three British outposts in Florida. The French allied with the Americans, their navy keeping the mighty Royal Navy at bay. The Dutch sent financial aid. How about the growing patriotism? The rebels were growing more and more patriotic, despite military setbacks. The Continental Army was more experienced kept together by the excellent leadership of George Washington. Without him as a leader, the cause would have been lost.